Hello everyone, welcome. If you're new around here, my name is Kweku and I'm a pharmacist. Today I'll be briefly reviewing the medication Ribelsis. We will take a look at what it is, what it is used for, some side effects, some benefits or some contraindications or who may not take Ribelsis. Just a quick reminder that all my reviews are for informational purposes only and they are not intended to be a substitute for medical advice from your physician. So what is Ribelsis? Well, ribelsis belongs to a class of medications called glucagon-like peptide 1 receptor agonists, or we call them GLP-1 agonists for short. They are also sometimes referred to as incretin mimetics. That is because they work like incretins, which are naturally occurring compounds that the body releases, which in turn leads to an increase in insulin production and subsequently a better control of blood sugar levels. As is obvious, ribelsis is used together with diet and exercise to manage type 2 diabetes. Ribelsus is also approved to be used in the reduction of risk of death due to certain heart diseases in diabetic patients. In order to achieve blood glucose control, Ribelsus primarily works in three main ways. Firstly, as I mentioned earlier, Ribelsus improves insulin secretion. So typically, some diabetic patients have low levels of circulating incretins, which in turn leads to low level of insulin production. And therefore, taking a medication like Ribelsus, which acts like incretins, induces the body to produce more insulin, which ultimately helps in the management of your blood sugar levels. The second way by which ribelsus works is by suppressing glucagon. Now glucagon is the hormone that is responsible for converting stored glycogen into glucose, which is ultimately released into the bloodstream. So you have a twofold action where number one, you're producing more insulin to break down your glucose. And then also you are suppressing a blood sugar spike by suppressing glucagon, which would have otherwise caused an increase in blood sugar levels by converting stored glycogen into glucose and releasing it. The third way by which ribelsus works is delaying or slowing gastric emptying and reducing food intake. Now slowing gastric emptying in very simple terms means that it takes a little longer for the food to transit through the gastrointestinal tract and this has an effect of ultimately preventing high blood sugar levels or hyperglycemia. Dosing typically starts at 3 mg per day and this 3 mg is usually not intended to achieve effective glucose control or glycemic control but it's just for the initial titration such that whoever is taking it can get used to the medication and to minimize the incidence of side effects. Typically you see people on 7 mg daily or if needed that dose may be increased to 40 mg daily. With respect to side effects, most of the reported ones are somehow gastrointestinal related. So we have incidences of abdominal pain occurring in about 5.7 to 11% of the people that take ribelsus, constipation occurring in about 3.1 to 6%, diarrhea 8.5 to 10%, nausea 11% to 20.3%. And 20.3% is quite significant. I mean, you're talking about approximately one in five people that take ribelsus will have some incidence or some occurrence of nausea at some point. Vomiting has also been reported in about 5% to 9.2% of the people that take ribelsus. Another frequent side effect reported is the development of hypoglycemia, where the blood sugar level go too low. This was observed in about 1.6% to 3.8% of people taking ribelsus alone or in monotherapy. However, this percentage significantly jumps up to between 6 and 30% when ribelsus is used in combination therapy. That is when it is used in combination with other diabetic medications. And thinking about 30%, you realize that that is approximately one in three people who would have an experience of hypoglycemia. It is therefore highly recommended to know what the signs of hypoglycemia are and to have an action plan as to how you will deal with it if it ever happens to you. Other side effects which are possible but less frequently observed include dehydration, dizziness, dysgesia, which is a distortion in taste, dyspepsia, fatigue, flatulence, and in some very rare cases, pancreatitis. Now with pancreatitis, it could be serious and pancreatitis is the inflammation of the pancreas. So most of the time or almost all the time, the doctor will be monitoring you as you start on ribelsus or other medications in that class just to make sure that there is no development of pancreatitis because usually development of pancreatitis may sometimes warrant discontinuation of the medication. Best practice is to take ribelsus with a maximum of four ounces of just plain water. Ribelsus is also recommended to be taken at least 30 minutes before the first food or beverage or any other medications for the day for that matter. 
as much as possible. Take ribelsis at regular intervals. Do not cut, crush, or chew ribelsis. Now, despite these side effects, ribelsis also has definitely got some good benefits or some pluses. One of them is the reduction of A1C. Now, ribelsis has been shown and proven to reduce A1C for people taking it. In one particular study over a six-month period, people taking 7 mg of ribelsis decreased their A1C by 1.2%. That percentage actually increased slightly to 1.4% for people taking 14 milligrams of ribelsis over the six month period. And the average starting A1C for the study participants was 8%. So if you're struggling to bring your A1C down, ribelsis is definitely a medication that you and your doctor can consider. The other benefit of ribelsis is weight loss. And I must say here that ribelsis is not approved to be used for weight loss. However, studies do show that it actually does cause weight loss. In one particular six-month study, participants who took 40 milligrams of ribelsis lost on the average 8 pounds, and participants that took 7 milligrams of ribelsis lost 5 pounds. So there is definitely an established correlation between taking ribelsis and weight loss. So if you are diabetic and you also need to lose weight, that is another reason why you and your doctor may consider ribelsis. Another plus for ribelsis is that it does not increase the risk of major cardiovascular events, you know, such as heart attack, stroke, or even death. On the contrary, ribelsis is approved to reduce the risk of death or mortality in certain diabetic patients who also have heart problems, who also have cardiovascular disease. So yet another plus for ribelsis. Now who may not take ribelsis or what are the contraindications? Ribelsis is contraindicated in people with a personal or family history of certain kinds of thyroid tumors. That is because in rodents, they found that ribelsis or medications in that class cause an increase in the occurrence of these thyroid tumors. So if you have a personal or family history of thyroid cancer, not necessarily just thyroid disease like hyperthyroidism or anything like that, if there's been real cancer that is in remission or there's a family member that has a history of cancer, thyroid cancer, then you may not necessarily be a good candidate for ribelsis is actually contraindicated for such people so there you go a very high level overview of ribelsis i sincerely hope you found some value in this video if you did consider giving it a thumbs up consider subscribing to the channel for more videos like this if you have not already done so thank you so much and i'll catch you on the next video